Welcome to this Pastoral Care mini-series with me, Katie Fitzgerald, a biblical counsellor working at Oldfield Park Baptist Church on the outskirts of Bath. In these episodes, we will be exploring some Q&As in the pastoral care world of our churches and zooming in on our personal walks with God. Well, today's question is kind of a few questions in one, but we'll have a go. What is biblical counselling? Is it worth looking into even if I don't want to become a counsellor or be counselled? And do you think all churches need a counsellor on their staff? Well, for me personally, biblical counselling has become something that I do on a formal professional basis. And that is such a blessing to be able to offer that particular boundaried and safe place that comes with having a quiet room of the church to chat together Usually we're strangers meeting with the sole purpose to talk about deeply personal and hard things. And there's something easier about me being that little bit more removed from the person's usual social circles. There's something safe feeling about knowing which sofa you sit on each week, which drink we'll drink together, and what time I pray and draw the session to an end. That helps you to carry on for the week ahead, and also to come back again But that's certainly not the main thrust of what biblical counselling looks like, and it's not where my biblical counselling journey began. Biblical counselling is about equipping all of God's people to wisely love others through gospel-soaked interactions. It is thinking about all of our settings of conversation, how we chat in our work contexts, in our family contexts, how we build up or fail to over coffee when church feels finished, how close friends talk to friends, parents talk to children, all of it. There are also more obvious biblically intentional settings like your conversations with a one-to-one who you read scripture with or conversations at an evangelistic or community event. We want to be thoughtful in all of these settings Biblical counselling, then, is about how we listen and how we speak in ways that bring God glory. It's helpful to think about it as a personal ministering of the word. And it's a ministry we're always learning to do better. There are different ways that we share God's word with one another in a church context. All are important. I'm sure you'll agree that we need to find as many ways of weaving scripture into our sinful hearts as possible. When we think of ministering God's word, we might fall into thinking that ministry of the word is just preaching. It's more than preaching. Of course, preaching is a vital word ministry, but it isn't the only word ministry. Another we might think of is small group Bible studies. Again, a vital word ministry, but not the only word ministry we do with one another throughout the week. The Bible calls us to encourage, rebuke, warn and comfort one another by speaking the truth in love in everyday life. The Bible actually has about 80 verses with one another commands given to believers. Here's an exercise for you. Go and look up all 80-ish verses and see all of the ways that God calls us to be with one another. God cares about how we treat one another Giving time to biblical counsel, then, is giving time to the interpersonal or conversational word ministry that goes on among believers. And that complements our edifying sermons and Bible study groups. I don't know about you, but personally as a believer, I know that I need alone time with God, church leaders preaching his word to me, a small group leader doing the same in a slightly more personal way, And then a handful of close friends ministering God's word to me in my life on the ultimate personal level, knowing me, being able to comfort me or check up on me or challenge me. Friends who talk scripture into my celebrations, my suffering, my sinfulness and my mundane humdrum moments Monday to Sunday. It may sometimes feel easier to be a Christian in a Sunday service Not always, but it can be easier to feel connected to scripture in that environment of fellowship. But we need each other to minister into all of our moments between Sundays too, to help us live by grace in the nitty gritty realities and to work out our faith in the moments we're tempted to go wayward from God. So as I'm talking, you can probably hear that, no, I don't think biblical counselling is something reserved for those of us who wish to do it in a formal, professional setting. I actually give half of my working week to that kind of 
biblical counselling, but the other half I give to training up on a ground level, which I'm totally persuaded is the most valuable and biblical model of caring for one another. There'll be another episode on this, actually, on pastoral care structures in our local church coming up in a few weeks. Of course, though, there is also a place to spot those in your church family who have a particular gifting and a love for pastoral care, who move towards those people who are so in need and struggling. It's a privilege and it's exciting to spot these people in our congregations and to build them up in training for specific sticky pastoral situations. And if that looks like one day having a biblical counsel at your church, then great. But don't worry if that isn't a reality for your church at the moment. I think the best way to envision it actually is to think of the evangelist. If your church is able to employ a professional evangelist on your staff team, this can bring many exciting opportunities. But it does not negate the need for a church family to be active in following the calling to each of us, to share the hope we have in Christ with those around. Equally, giving and receiving biblical support as a body of believers is something we're all called to do day by day. Employing a biblical counsellor is exciting and useful, but this is a team effort. We never want a church to have a, I'm relieved I can wash my hands of this hard pastoral issue and send them to this specialist kind of attitude. Some of you have heard the phrase that biblical counselling is biblical with a little b and counselling with a little c. If you haven't, that's okay, because I'll explain it briefly now. We say biblical with a little b because what we're doing here is not quickly jumping in with Bible verses to give to someone. Biblical counselling is not a system. It's not about matching a verse for every problem. Biblical counselling is personal ministry done from a biblical worldview. It means seeing the complexity of a life and seeing people in the light of the gospel of Jesus. It means seeing each of our personal stories through the bigger story, God's story. And from that, yes, there will be times where we share scripture with each other, but it isn't our go-to first response if someone comes to us with a complex issue. We say we're counselling with a little c because all of us are little c counsellors in the lives of others all of the time. If you've advised any friend or colleague or student or client or spouse or child or pet in any way today, you have given counsel. It may not have been wise counsel, but it was counsel. If you've listened this far, I'm guessing the thought of making your counsel to others more biblical sounds worthwhile. God has entrusted whole churches with this precious purpose. Being united together in Jesus, we encourage one another daily to keep depending on him for our every need. We have a God-given role to help shepherd the people entrusted to our church's care. A final point, though, on the word counselling. I've joked before about how when I was first training in biblical counselling and friends and family would ask me, what is it that you're studying? Whenever I answered biblical counselling, I'd get funny looks. All of my non-Christian family and friends would wince at the word biblical, and many of my believer family and friends would wince at the word counselling. The truth is, though, that the word counsellor, with a little c, is a Bible word. But it is a word that carries connotations. Sometimes it may not be appropriate for you to use the word counsellor in your ministry context, for the sake of transparency and caution over what we are implying to those who come to us in need. We want to be honest and open. For example, I have a policy agreement booklet that people who meet with me all sign as they begin sessions with me, and it just explains some of these things. It explains in there exactly what training I have and what training I haven't had. Having said that though, we do believe that the phrase biblical counselling is perfect for what we're engaging in here. And that's because the Bible used the word counsellor long before society did. Through God's word, we have ultimate comfort, advice and counsel given by God to people that he created and understands and loves. 
believers and non-believers, for any issue, no matter how complex the need. He is the original counsellor, if you like, the wonderful counsellor, and we long to give each other Christ-like counsel. The other thing is, I guarantee you will already have friends counselling friends with biblical reason and encouragement spread across your congregations. Biblical counselling is not new. We aren't trying to push a new ministry here, but rather encourage one another in a very ancient one. You could call it soul care or pastoral care or one anothering or biblical counselling, but as long as the saints in our churches are building one another up in the Lord, hopefully feeling confident in the Holy Spirit equipping them and all that the Bible offers in the middle of normal everyday chats. Yes, with a level of care, just as the preacher handles God's word with care. Well, then that is what we mean by biblical counselling. I hope that this Q&A mini-series will give you a taste of how we go about talking in specific pastoral situations with a Bible that doesn't necessarily mention that particular thing by its word. So what does the Bible say about addictions, for example? I don't see that word in there. But we do this with thorough thinking around each circumstance, compassionate honing in on the person's reactions, and then deeper still onto the heart, so that we can be best encouraging one another in our faith, bearing with one another in love, as God progressively, in his own timing, refines each one of us. Well, that's the end of the answer, really, so feel free to switch it off now. But if you're intrigued to know more about where my training and thinking on biblical counselling stems from, my background is through CCEF, and that's the Christian Counselling Educational Foundation, based in the States, which excitingly has kickstarted a UK arm, if you like, and that's BC UK, Biblical Counselling UK. They provide teaching in biblical counselling to individuals and to churches all over the UK, particularly the certificate course that you can study at different regional venues. So, for example, we facilitate a South West cohort here in Bath. That certificate course is actually the one I studied almost a decade ago now. It has changed slightly, been updated since then, but it was and it still is full to the brim of rich and practical content to help us better love people, whatever the context. You can take just one module and that lasts about three months or so, or you can complete the whole certificate, which can take up to three years, just depending on what suits you. But it is such an investment. The certificate course totally changed how I talk and listen to everyone in any circumstance. It really has influenced my every relationship. And I have been, it's fair to say, pretty obsessed with receiving and giving and learning about biblical counsel ever since. So yeah, it's not just for the person that wants to become a counsellor and sit in a counselling room. It's for anybody in a church, if only we could all give time to thinking about these things wouldn't life be that little bit easier if you want to find out more about this kind of church care let me recommend to you that you look up ccef or bc uk on the internet and just because we love acronyms let me throw in one more for good measure the ibcd website the institute for biblical counseling and discipleship has some brilliant resources too topical talks and blog posts for you to browse for free to help you think through supporting one another on a more biblical footing.